Hello friends and welcome to our Sunday gathering here at Castle Hill Baptist Church Online. My name's Kevin and it's my pleasure to welcome you whether you've, uh, you're a visitor or whether you're a regular. It's great for us to be able to gather together in this way to worship our living God. And I want to start by allowing God's word to speak to us. So hear these words from Exodus 15, the song of Miriam and Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defence. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. And so today we gather from our scattered places seeking to worship our powerful God, to hear from our wonderful Saviour, to praise him for all he has done. And as we sing, may his name be lifted high. As we listen, may our hearts be realigned with his. As we reflect, may his spirit remind us of the hope to which he has called us, of the plans he has for our lives, of his amazing grace seen in Jesus Christ, of his abundant love for his world. And as we respond, may the works of our hands, the words of our mouths, and the thoughts of our hearts shine for Jesus in all we do. So let's sing together of our hope found in Christ alone. Thank you. 
let's pray together. Loving God, we want to thank you for Jesus. We want to thank you for his willingness to leave the throne, to give up everything for a broken creation so that we might find restoration in him. Thank you for his sacrifice upon the cross and upon the power of the resurrection. Thank you for the hope that we find in Jesus. Thank you that you have revealed him to us and that many of us are found in him. Thank you, Lord, for the reminder that he is the light of the world and that no darkness will ever put out that light. That he is the one who stands in victory and that we are his and that he is ours. Thank you for the forgiveness we find in Christ alone. Thank you that no matter how far we've strayed from you this week, you welcome us back if we seek your face. And so, Lord, we, we say we're sorry as we gather together, Lord, as we place you back at the centre of everything in our lives. We start by just admitting our need for you. Lord, forgive us for those times we've done things or thought things or even just been uh, absent in the place where we could have been active. Thank you, Lord, that you forgive us. That you call all those who are truly sorry back to yourself. Lord, this day, as we continue to think on our whole lives as lives of worship, Lord, help us to be your kingdom people. Help us to live within the story that you tell us, the power of Christ in us, shaping our lives, that commands our destiny, and that no power of hell, and that no scheme of man can ever pluck us from your hand and that you will return. You will bring us safe into your house where you have prepared a room for us. And so it's in your power that we rest. And it's to you we look as our God, our hope and our saviour continue to guide our worship to you this day we pray in your name amen well friends today we're we're thinking about how worship transforms our ordinary actions and our new verse of encouragement i've changed it slightly because i know some of you uh, are, are not doing it as a memory verse so uh, our, our verse of encouragement for this week uh, reminds us of why this is it's taken from uh, 2 corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 and it says this therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation she is a new creation the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Say that with me, will you? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. She is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And whilst it's great to remember that when we place Jesus on the throne of our lives, the Holy Spirit gets to work helping us to become more like Jesus. It's even more amazing to think that from that moment, rather than seeing our sin, God looks on and sees the righteousness of Jesus. He sees us as a holy and dearly loved people who have been redeemed. Wow. And so we can know we are a new creation right now and that should change everything, including how others see Christ in us. 
And so our next song speaks of this truth and uses our uh, ordinary actions to help us express these words. And so I'm going to hand over to Molly, who's going to lead us in this. Hello, today I'm going to teach you some actions for our next song. So first it shines and it hands burst from the inside out that the world's going to make a world trip with your hands then point your eyes, we'll see. Then up, you, God, live in me. And then the next section is, you know me, you love me, you feel me, and swing your arms around, send me to shine. And there, just watch out for the fast bit. Hmm, I wonder if Noren could help me. Well, thanks to all those who were involved in bringing that song together. Now, using our hands to enhance our sung worship is not the only way we can worship. Uh, and last week I spoke about using our creative talents. Uh, and so one way we can respond to this theme of, of whole life worship is through the art form. And there's all sorts of ways that we can do this. But uh, as an example, someone sent in this week a, a photo to me of, of what they saw going on in uh, creation. And that reminded them of a characteristic of God in their everyday life. And just linking those two things together is a really simple way of, of recognising that God is at work. Not just on a Sunday, uh, but wherever we're going and in whatever we're doing. That's the kind of thing uh, I'm thinking about. It doesn't need to be complicated. And if you're not a photographer, that's fine. Uh, you may like to write poems or, or songs uh, and you could talk about how you, you know Jesus is with you or you could think about how he changes your everyday outlook or, or actions, describing the, the situation that it would have been and how Jesus makes a difference. Uh, 
John's uh, told me that uh, he's very willing to work with someone if, if they've particularly got a kind of a, a lyrical idea, uh, but they don't perhaps have the skills to, to produce the music. Uh, so if you wanted to get in touch with him to, to partner up, he's, he's open to that idea too. But, but song is only one of many aspects of the arts uh, that we can use uh, to worship our God. So whatever you're thinking of doing, uh, do let me know. Do get in touch so I've got an idea uh, of what's coming up in the next few weeks. Now, if that's not uh, the kind of thing that you think you can get involved in, uh, then this certainly is, because what we're looking to do for, for Valentine's Day is to have another display in our church window. Uh, Kathy and Carolyn are working closely together to design this. Uh, and what they've asked for is uh, for, for A4 size hearts to be made, which can then be hung up in the church window. Uh, you can decorate them however you want, and all the details are in the new sheet. But the key thing is that they need to be... Uh, through the gateway post box uh, by next Sunday so we know what we've got so that's uh, a4 size filling the page hearts uh, by next Sunday finally if if there's some way that God has been at work in your life in these in these last few months and I'm sure there is I, I definitely know of some uh, but the key is that you're willing to share it we'd love to be hearing uh, more testimonies of what God is up to because if nothing else, they, they're absolutely brilliant at encouraging each other uh, to hear how God is uh, at work in the everyday of our lives. Uh, so please do get in touch. Please don't be shy. And if you don't want to be on camera, uh, that's fine. You can write it and you've seen us before. We can communicate it in other ways. Uh, so please do uh, get involved as best you can. So we've just sung about how we want others to, to see Jesus living in us. And one of the ways uh, people can see us shine is in the ways we step up and put our faith into action by becoming the hands and feet, even the voice of Jesus in the, in the here and now. Identifying our, our natural passions for certain topics and, and then considering how we can get involved. Now, I know that that can seem scary to, to some people, uh, and that's why I want to show you uh, two short videos provided by uh, Christian Aid, uh, which help us to see that we can all make a difference, even in simple ways. And so we're first going to hear from Helen, and then we're going to hear from Sarah. When I'm out amongst the beauty of the environment, I'm very conscious of the God who created this who made it and loved it and wants us to enjoy the creation, but also that we have a huge responsibility to care for the environment. And it's become increasingly clear to me over the years of the damage being done through climate change and the devastating effects that's having on individuals and whole countries are desperately affected. I know it's just not fair and I feel that deep down that we can't just do nothing about it when people have caused by our lifestyle so much damage to the earth. I became aware that climate change was a major issue for Christian Aid and I decided to sign up to become a campaigner. We can do so much as individuals but there are people in government who have the power to change laws that will make a real difference to the environment. And I think that those of us who believe passionately about change have to be speaking to those who have the power to change things at a structural level. And I think it's really important as part of our, our church life. It's a, a real response to what I believe is a call from the Bible to be caring for the environment and to be working for justice because I really feel strongly that campaigning on climate change is a real justice issue. I'm Helen Hughes and I have faith in action. One Sunday I went to church and my vicar was talking about the fruits of the spirit and he mentioned gentleness. And for me, that's when the penny dropped, that activism could be gentle. And that just made loads of sense to me. So as kids growing up, we saw that Christianity wasn't fluffy and sweet, but it was about standing up against injustice. But as an introvert, so many forms of activism really drained me. 
but I didn't want to give up, so I needed to find another way. I think the world is beautiful, like really gorgeous, and yes, there are problems, but I totally believe that a creator had to make this complex, messy world. I think we can use all of this in activism. So I use sewing and paper craft to make gifts for people in power, to encourage them to use their position of power for good. And I use the process of craft for people to engage deeply and compassionately about the issue. I might not be a craftivist for the rest of my life, but I hope I'll always be a gentle protester. And that, for me, is a great way of living out my faith. I'm Sarah Corbett, and I have faith in action. Well, they are just two of many issues facing our world, uh, but hopefully they give you some food for thought, planting seeds in your head, thinking about what your passion is and how you can be involved at this time. For now, let's continue in our gathered worship uh, by praying for our world and community. And this week, Alan and Margot are leading us in our intercessions. Our loving Heavenly Father, as we bring our prayers of intercessions before you this morning, we are conscious that we are gathering together not only our own fellowship at Castle Hill, but your church that is scattered around the country and indeed our world. Thank you, loving Heavenly Father, that we are dearly loved by you, your chosen people, and we want to say thank you that you have blessed us to be part of the family of God, where we can find love and acceptance. Help us, Heavenly Father, as our Creator and Lord, to seek your face at the beginning of each new day. Help us by your Holy Spirit to know your will, to control our thinking, so that we are equipped to live our lives in accordance with the plans you have for each one of us. Prayers for our country and the world. Lord, we pray that the spreading of this virus will end soon. And as we mourn and remember in our prayers the many who died during the past months, we ask that your peace can be spread into the lives of their loved ones who are left facing life without those that they loved and cared for. Many are thankful that they have been able to have at least the first dose of a vaccine that will bring a measure of safety to their lives. For those waiting to receive their dose, we pray that the time lag will not be too long. Thank you, Lord, for the work carried out so quickly and efficiently in the laboratories to produce the vaccines, and we pray that there will be an ongoing provision and replacement supplies. People are desperately worried for their future, either in work or welfare, and young people and children are falling behind in their education. We ask for guidance for parents as they seek to homeschool and guide children in this difficult time. As our national and local government representatives continue to consider the way forward in the lockdown, grant them peace of mind in their decisions as they listen to the advice of so many people. Across our world, there are many areas that need our prayer and financial support, and it's difficult to prayerfully support them all. Today I am praying for the work of Compassion UK, as their workers in many countries seek to bring help financially and educationally to disadvantaged children. Thank you to the many who sponsor a child. Also for the work of Mary's Meals, who are able through financial support to feed over one million children with one hot meal a day. Both organisations would value our continuing prayers for their work with underprivileged children. And Lord, 
Their work is going on while each country is coping with the virus spread too. Our prayers and hope is that the vaccine will soon be available to all. May our prayers and petitions to you bring them hope for a good future. We want to pray again for those in our own fellowship or any friends we know who are needing your healing touch right now. We continue to remember Nick and Joan, praying for your loving presence to be with them. Bring your healing and peace, we pray. We remember Nora, who is now back in her own home, and Helen as she cares for her. We thank you for answered prayer for other friends. May they know again your peace with them. We bring before you our wonderful NHS and ask for your protection over them. Thank you that so many of them have now received their vaccinations, but we ask that you will be their strength as they use their skills to care for so many sick and dying patients. Lord, you ask us to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Thank you for sending the ultimate example of how we should live. Thank you that you are kind and gentle with each one of us when we acknowledge our wrongdoing. Please help us to be kind and patient with others, whether in our thoughts, our words or our deeds. Change our hearts, Lord, to honour you in all we do, in our communities, amongst our neighbours and friends, and in our own family situations as your people, so that the world will see that you are over everything we do. Lord Jesus, give each one of us as members of your body your peace that passes all understanding. And whatever we do or say, help us to do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father, so that we can say together, May, May the mind of, of Christ, Christ our Saviour live in me from day to day, by his, his love and power controlling all I do and say. May the peace of God, my Father, rule my life in everything, that I may be calm to comfort, sick and sorrowing. May I run the race before me, strong and brave to face the foe, looking only unto Jesus, as I onward go. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, over the last couple of weeks, we've been thinking about how gathered worship can help shape our scattered worship. And today we continue on that theme and our reading comes from Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 12. Uh, so please do grab your Bible uh, and turn to uh, follow as I share some thoughts on God's word. And today, uh, my mum, Ruth, will be reading our passage for us. Uh, but before we hear that... Let's pray together. Father God, you are alive and active in our lives. Within us lives your Holy Spirit, guiding and shaping us. Please inspire our thoughts this day. Please speak into our hearts. Help us to hear your word. 
to understand it better and most importantly to respond how you are prompting us to. We commit ourselves and the time ahead to you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible reading is from the New Testament, Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Well, let me start today by telling you about Brother Lawrence. Born in 1611 to peasant parents in Lorraine, France, Nicholas Herman joined the army as a young man by necessity to survive, as this meant he had money and food each week. Now, after some time, Herman suffered an injury forcing him to retire from the army, and so he went on to serve as a footman, before deciding eventually to, to give up everything for Christ and became a lay brother in a monastery in Paris. Therefore, for the rest of his life, Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection worked in the kitchens, and in his final years, he repaired sandals. I think we can all agree, Brother Lawrence's daily work was both unremarkable and mostly hidden. It was as mundane as it comes, and I think we can definitely relate to some of that in our lives. But what is it about Brother Lawrence that makes him helpful for us today? I mean, did he sing versions of Shine Jesus Shine or Waymaker whilst washing up? Well, it's not that he didn't do that, but that he had a broader understanding of worship. For during his time in the kitchens, we learn through his letters to others of something he refers to as practising the presence of God, or as we might say, whole life worship. Through his mundane tasks, Brother Lawrence disciplined himself to combine the work of his hands with the continuous worship of God through Jesus Christ. Or as we might say, whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God as an offering of worship. Now we'll come back to Brother Lawrence uh, near the end of our time together. Uh, but many years before that, the Apostle Paul also sought to communicate this idea to the Colossians. For as we heard in verse 17, he said, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, this is not meant to be a, you know, another thing on their to-do list, but rather should be an outpouring of their response to being God's chosen people holy and dearly loved, verse 12. And this should be our response too, friends. For our whole lives should seek to be shaped by our new identity, which gives us a new motivation and brings about new actions and attitudes. So let's get started with that thought about our new identity and we read it last week, but we're going to read it again today. This is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others 
that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, I know some people can feel a bit uncomfortable with Paul's language of us being God's chosen people. But what Paul is doing here is drawing on an Old Testament idea and reframing it in light of Christ. That is to say, the people of Israel were always called to be a light for the nations. To make God known wherever they went, to live in the world, but not of the world. And most importantly, God chose them so that through them, Genesis 12, all families on earth would be blessed. The idea of God's chosen people has always been to reach out and bless others. To be like a, a light to a fly. They were to be a people who welcomed the stranger and stood up for the oppressed. To be an expression of God's love and grace through their obedience to him. Through Israel, God wanted all people to be drawn to him. This is the same imagery happening in our passage today. For as God's chosen people, convicted of our need for a saviour by the Holy Spirit, we are made holy in God's sight through the work of Jesus through cross and resurrection. And as those who choose to follow Jesus, we are therefore a new creation. Having taken off our old self, verse 9, with all its worldly ways and put on a new identity. One that is clothed in the attributes we find of Christ in verses 12 to 14. With compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, mutual forgiveness and love. This is the image of a radical community, humbled by recognising its own sinfulness, but exalted by having received the awesome forgiveness found in Christ alone. And that truth should drive us to our knees in prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to change us, as our song earlier said, from the inside out, so the world may see you live in me. For as we meet in the gathered communities to which God has called us, we learn to live out this new identity as the Holy Spirit does his work in us, teaching us to act differently with one another, to serve one another, and ultimately transforming our attitudes, words and deeds. After all, where else would you find such an eclectic bunch as us choosing to do life together? For it's through this new identity that we find our new motivation. In verse 15 to 16, Paul urges us to allow ourselves to become more like Christ. To allow the peace of Christ and the word of Christ to work itself out in and through our lives together. And let's not miss how it's a mutual process. As we teach and gently caution one another through songs of various kinds and God's word. The reality being that our worship then becomes a grateful response to our new lives in Christ. As a Baptist church, one of the core things of, of, of being a member uh, is our willingness to, to commit publicly to a covenant relationship with one another and with God. It's our willingness to, to walk together in the sight of God as we wrestle with all we face in life. And as we gather together, and as we said last week, allow our worship to teach us more of God's story and our place within it, our natural response should be to turn our songs back to him in praise as we allow ourselves to be changed. And that's not just in our gathered spaces, but also in our scattered contexts. For our new identity, which gives us a new motivation, brings about new actions and attitudes in everything. For we no longer do it for ourselves, 
but we do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and to the glory of God the Father. We practice the presence of God in the ways we relate to other people, in the work we do, in how we spend our money, in the order of our priorities. Wherever we go and in whatever we do, we allow the work of our hands to bring glory to God. And so what does this look like in practice? Well, we only need to look at our perfect example of Jesus, who shows us himself as the servant king, who came to serve, not to be served who humbled himself and gave his life as the ultimate act of worship to God. For wherever he went, teaching, healing, stressed, upset, relaxed, happy, drinking, eating, alone with his disciples, surrounded by thousands, whatever he did, he did it for the glory of God. Yes, he attended the temple. But in no way did he separate that from the worship that happened in the rest of the time. We see in Jesus that all of life was an act of worship. And when we consider the example of Brother Lawrence, you'll hear in a moment of how we find someone willing to serve in areas he didn't even like to. Yet, in spite of his limitations... He trusted in God in all things and found him faithful. Here's a few examples coming out of his letters. Recently, I went to Burgundy to buy the wine provisions for the society which I have joined. This was a very unwelcome task for me. I have no natural business ability and, being lame, I cannot get around the boat except by rolling myself over the casks. Nonetheless, this matter gave me no uneasiness, nor did the purchase of the wine. I told the Lord it was his business that I was about. Afterwards, I found the whole thing well performed. And so it is the same in the kitchen, a place to which I have a great natural aversion. I have accustomed myself to doing everything there for the love of God. On all occasions, with prayer, I have found my work easy during the 15 years in which I have been employed here. We can do little things for God. I turn the cake that is frying on the pan for love of him. And that done, if there is nothing else to call me, I prostrate myself in worship before him, who has given me grace to work. Afterwards, I I rise happier than a king. It is enough for me to pick up but a straw from the ground for the love of God. For the time of business does not differ for me from the time of prayer. And in the noise and clatter of my kitchen, while several persons are at the same time calling for different things, I possess God in as great a tranquility as if I were upon my knees at the blessed sacrament. Nearly everyone has problems with wandering thoughts. The mind is a true rover. When I first began, my mind was also undisciplined. Because of this lack, my first efforts at devotion were hampered by the wandering and dissipation of my mind. Such habits are difficult to overcome. But the foundation of the spiritual life, for me, has been a high image of God and a high esteem of God, both of which I arrive at by faith. Brother Lawrence allowed his new identity in Christ to give him a new motivation to bring about new actions and attitudes in all he did, wherever he went, whether he liked them or not, He sought to become aware of Christ in the here and now of his every day. And his commitment to serving him in all he did meant that a kitchen worker and a a shoe repairer became widely known as a spiritual director. 
when thinking about this subject of, of worship and how we respond. I, I like the way that worship leader Tara Banks puts it. She says, in worship, we offer a living, active response to the active, living word from an active, living God. In our workplaces, households, communities and families, our worship is how we live out the call to be the light of Jesus in this world. To love other people through our acts of kindness, sacrifice, forgiveness and service. Not for human praise or thanks, but in the knowledge that Father God is watching on and knows we offer each action to him alone. Friends, what we're talking about here is choosing to live a kingdom life now. We're talking about allowing the fruit of the Spirit to shape our actions, helping us discern how to act as the light of Christ wherever we are. And of course, that's going to look different for each of us. For the one who has to deal daily with the obnoxious boss, to the other having to care for a sick partner. For the person with no concerns about money, to, to the family who struggle to get by each and every day. Every person's front line is different. But our motivation should be the same. To allow all we do to be worship. Now some of you know that Joy and I lead a CPAS Christian holiday each summer for underprivileged children who don't normally get a holiday but absolutely need one. And if this was a, a non-Christian holiday, then I don't think we'd find too many volunteers giving up a week of their hard-earned holiday to come and supervise a, a group of children who, who don't have amazing manners, usually, uh, some of whom will likely wet the bed, uh, who will get into fights, and in an environment where, as leaders, they'll need to clean the floors, tables and toilets throughout the week, often without being thanked after it, uh, not have any me time and have to sleep on uncomfy plastic covered beds but tell them they're doing it to serve Jesus and this usually changes the heart of the matter now each and every action done is an act of worship to God it doesn't make it any easier but the motivation is different and the power in which you serve is the greatest there is. Once again, this reminds me of the importance of community. For as we gather to worship and share with one another the, the struggles we face throughout our weeks, we are also encouraged and refilled with the Spirit of God. As others sing words of God's faithfulness over us, encourage us from his word, and Join with us in praying for God's strength and wisdom in dealing with whatever we face. We also do this as we meet over socials, phone calls, times of prayer, house groups, as well as this Sunday gathering. In each of these, as we gather together as God's people, we can reorientate our situations and identities back within God's story. So that as we return to our scattered lives, our actions are once again shaped by the good news of Jesus. In this way, friends, we once again affirm our identity in Christ and find the motivation to keep running the race he has set before us, seeking to practice the presence of God wherever we are, whether in word or deed, doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him, as we let worship transform our everyday actions into lights that shine for Jesus. Amen. Head down, grit teeth, roll on another week. Monday mornings, mundane job and tasks. Eat, work, tweet, graft, sleep, repeat. Late nights, early nights, keeping balance right. Dinner, dishes, washing, bed, bath, morning light. Concentrating hard, throwing myself in. Lift my given hands to work and losing touch with what's within. Each day, a gentle numbing. <sighs> 
Sunday. Gathered church, gathered people, gather myself to worship, lift my heart. Head up, breathe deep, invite you into the week. Lift my given hands to work and touching heaven as I do. Lift my hands to work and work's an instrument of praise. Your abiding presence filling up my days. Turn my eyes to you and your delight compels my tasks. Lift my heart to worship, lift my heart to bask in your warmth. Even in busyness, I'm stilled in you. When scattered, you're with us and we are in you. Well, one of the things I love about Brother Lawrence is how he's so real about the challenges we face when trying to live our whole life of worship. And of course, what we're sharing is is not about trying to make anyone feel guilty, but rather about becoming more aware of how we can worship him in all we do, wherever we are. So the next song I've uh, chosen is designed to allow us some space to reflect on what we've just heard. Of course, you're very welcome to sing along and declare what I would say are aspirational lyrics, aspirational commitment. Or you may just want to allow what you're hearing to just wash over you. Either way, what I'd love you to consider in the next few moments is how you will respond to what you've heard today in the week ahead.
Well, friends, it's been great to have this time to worship together wherever we are, knowing that we are connected together through one Lord, our Jesus Christ. And uh, if anything in uh, today's service has, has uh, touched your heart and you want to let me know, uh, don't forget about the testimonies too, then uh, please do get in touch. If you're visiting uh, and you're not connected up with us in some way, then please do uh, complete our connect form. We'd love to tell you more about what's going on in our church life and get you more plugged in if that's something you'd like to do. Uh, in terms of seeing each other, at our last church meeting, uh, we talked about uh, how uh, positive the Zoom Christmas Day service was. Uh, and so what were we going to do in terms of thinking about starting to move uh, back towards, uh, at some point, uh, being able to gather in the building in a distance way and then eventually uh, in, in a more normal way, uh, we're going to start moving our Sunday communion services onto Zoom. So that's the third Sunday uh, of the month, uh, plus other special events. And, and it will all be put into the news sheet so you know when it's happening. Uh, hopefully I'll remember to tell you uh, like this uh, the week before. Uh, and for, for members and for those who let us know who are regulars, uh, then we'll just send that code out to you each week. And so, uh, sorry, once a month when it happens, uh, so that you don't have to be signing up. Uh, but if you're visiting, uh, then there is a way uh, that you can sign up through the website uh, and that will be uh, really clear. If you just go to warwickbaptist.org.uk, uh, you'll be able to find how to sign up to those services. So as our uh, time together draws to a close, we're going to sing again in a moment a song which reminds us that we are always sent people, called to live for Jesus in all of our lives, whatever that looks like, even in lockdown seeking to be his shining lights. And so as we return to our scattered lives, friends, I pray that you will experience God's presence on your front line this week, that you will shine as lights for Jesus wherever you are, and that the Spirit will guide you in your decisions and deeds. For whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father, through him. Amen. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to shine your light in the way we live. Send us out in the power of your Spirit As we've received, may we freely give Send us out, send us out Send us out for your glory Let all we do be praised to you Send us out for your glory Send us out, send us out for your 